No, no, I think the last time we saw each other was about four or five years ago. Yep. You were very young, you were in your, uh, uh, just graduated high school. Man, you are young. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. You, you look identical, you look the same since the last time I've seen you. And I keep seeing you everywhere. I see you on, I see you on my phone, I see you on TV when I go back home for you. And, um, and it's so crazy how you've, you've went in, I've known you, because I've known you before you started this, yeah. This entire I, I don't even know what to call it exactly. It doesn't have a name. Um, I don't I don't call you an influencer, I don't call you a, a food blogger, I don't. I call you someone that shows you the beauty of and for me when it comes to your TV show, the beauty of Beirut with the food that we have, our culture, and with every dish that you present you present a story with it. So I, I don't even I don't know how to describe you, and, and, and I don't know what Anthony is, and um, it's not I just know. no garlic, no onions. So that's that's what what are, what what, bro? <laughs> Man, uh, the respect is mutual. Last time we we, we, we worked together or, or met several times before we 2012, yes. in another perception of what I was, and then came no garlic, no onions. No garlic, no onions is about people. It's about the social media channels of people who do not have social media channels. It's right. about showing Lebanon to the world, it's about passion, it's about love, it's about positivity, it's about happiness, about smiles, um, it's about food discoveries, it's about everything. No garlic onions is a, just a, a bubble of happiness and joy. It's a, exactly, it's, it's for me, that, that, I think that's the best description. It's, it's happiness, because whatever it is that you're describing, whatever it is that you're portraying, whether it's the car rides, because I see you film content, you driving up to locations and, 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 and getting to places. It's the happiness from that till the end, till you actually leave that place. And you just, you watch and you have a smile on your face. And that's crazy that something so, I don't know, I, 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 it's simple, but yet I, I don't know how you do it. That just pulls in so many smiles and so many people, but it's, for me, it's magical, bro. Talking about, uh, talking about the car and driving there, I have an announcement. Now me. No garlic and onions is turning zero carbon emission. And wow. we have an electric car that is going to take us all across Lebanon. And I'm announcing it today. But wait, electric car taking yes. you across Lebanon. Yes. I have to ask you. Yeah. We need to power them up, though. With solar panels on the roof. Amazing. Exactly. Amazing. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. All right. Yes. Because so, was, as okay. of um, the 1st of February, all right. no garlic or onions all right. would won't be polluting any more Lebanon. Okay. Uh, no garlic or onions is zero emission. No garlic or onions is turning green. No garlic or onions is trying to be, um, I don't know how to say it. Uh, the environment fluidly yes. friendly, that's the word. Yes, because changing Lebanon and being a difference in Lebanon and uh, having a value in your country starts by yourself. Exactly. And I want to start, I want to... And that's perfect because, yeah. because like you inspire so many people to check out different locations in Lebanon. Because this is what you did. You see, what Anthony has done was he's went to villages across the country. If you don't know this, a lot of people do know this. But you've went to villages that I have never heard of in my life. And I remember sitting with my with my mom. We were at home. And she was telling them, we're in Haida, you know, where is this place? And So you're not just showing the, our culture and our food and, and, and the best the best places where you can have the most delicious foods. Uh, it's just locations that no one has ever heard of. And, and I think because of you, you've, br you've brought in footfall to places that we've never heard of. So, which is, which is amazing. So that's where a, a subcategory comes in where you're like a tourist, you're a guy, you're a tourist guy. What do you call them, tourist guides? Bro, that, but Jack, let you know? me tell you something. You cannot love something that you do not know. And unfortunately, us Lebanese do not know our country. True. Let me tell you a little bit about Lebanon. Lebanon is more than 2,200 villages. Lebanon is hundreds of different choices of food, more than 120 different plates of meza on the table, more than 250 different plates of food prepared at home. Lebanon has four seasons, less than 50 days of rain during the year. Lebanon is a country where you can plant everything. We have one of the best avocados in the world, one of the best apples in the world, one of the best everything you can imagine of which bananas. So Lebanon, their Lebanon, we have studied during university or school days 
history and geography, Lebanon of Lebanon and Lebanon of Hamas. Lebanon is way more than that. Lebanon is 16 million people across the globe. So, what I wanted to do and my dream, and yet we're celebrating the 10th anniversary. What you did though, 10th anniversary, yeah? 10 years, 10th anniversary this year, uh, is show the world the Lebanon as not seen on TV. Because TV is the only. Yeah, it shows you. Well, you know, in, in Beirut, which, which is which is so sad, though, I'd be watching your show, and then before and after that, you'd be bombarded with so much weird negativity, and, and we're not going to go into politics, obviously, but you know, in the situation that not, isn't that good, I, I think it's great that they're, they've been pushing your show a lot, because you also have reruns, I don't know if you know this, you have reruns that go on several times during the day, so it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air, and I feel it's a reminder for a lot of people that this is the beauty of Lebanon, this is what we present, so I think you came at the right time, and uh, you're, if, in my opinion, the only thing on Lebanese TV, I'm just honest to God, I think you are the only thing on Lebanese TV today that sheds any source of positivity and life and happiness and smiles to the people who are watching you across the country and in the UAE and everywhere else in the world. Because, you see, living all over the world, if you're, if you're, if you're tuned to these stations in Beirut, it's so much negativity and negativity and negativity. So, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's amazing, bro. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you. Thank and... You. After Lebanon, remember that we are more than 16 million Lebanese across the globe. So why not travel all across the globe and search for them? Lebanese success stories, Lebanese heroes, people who have left, not because they don't want to live in Lebanon, because Lebanon was too small for them. And they went all across the world, searching for new opportunities, building things of which you, others, this concept, and, and the, the Lebanese behind it, and many other things, and showing them to the world. You know, when, when you say about, when, when you talk about a success story, a success story in the internet world or the world is someone with a jacket and, uh, and the tie and millions of dollars in, in the bank. For me, success story is someone who has succeeded of selling anything, of doing anything, of opening a shop, of um, just putting his name where others never had the courage to, of which doing a manushi. It starts as simple as that. So this is how, how it goes. And I've been to Australia, I've been to places, France and so on. Uh, searching for success. Now, I want to ask you before I even get into into social district and what we what we're doing here and, and what this place represents. Uh, I want to find out what, what's next. Okay, so we, we're going to eco-friendly cars. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going. To, but what is next for you? You're in Dubai. Uh, I've seen so many stories about you here. I've seen you visiting a lot of beautiful locations and, and restaurants in in Dubai. But what is next for you as an Anthony? Not as a no garlic, no onion. Not as a what you do, but you know, are you looking to continue? Are you are you growing this business, or are you are you going to switch to something else, or what are you doing? What's next for you in your in your life? Uh, I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm not sure if I want to tell you all the stories. But again, when I remember in 2012 when I started and how many people didn't believe in what I'm going to do, when I remember in 2013 when I planned on going on TV, when I remember 2014 and asked. Lebanese televisions to host my show and they were like who would watch something like this come on it doesn't sell ads uh, when I continued in 2015 and 16 and 17 and the travels and so on so I can tell you Jack that I will never stop I love it I yes. love making people happy I love filming people and how many more villages could you visit so there's only so many what happens next though it's about the success stories is about new factories it's okay. about productions it's about um, and international success stories it's about villages it's about different people you cannot imagine I am I film every single day every single oh, day wow. uh, let me tell you something in the year of COVID so that's 2019 2020 I published on YouTube 1800 videos that is more than four a day, crazy. four to five a day. That's crazy. When people were sitting at home and just watching Netflix all day long. I was so there's all of it. <laughs> because, because you see, the reason why I was one of them is because I didn't know. You were watching my shows. My, I, I, I was sitting there we watching your three, four shows a day. Because for me personally, in, in my, my field was the first field that shut down. So everything to do with clubs, entertainment, and, and, and restaurants was the first to shut down and the last to open. So for us, it was. It was it wasn't that it wasn't that easy at all. So for me, is always think outside outside the box. Yeah. Always adapt to situations. Always try to find a, a, a way to, to follow what that's what's happening. I've changed. I've changed in 2019 and 20 and 21. I've changed. I've changed in 2016. I've changed all across adapting situations, finding the the right opportunities, 
finding the right filming opportunities. Uh, now I'm in Dubai consulting, have, I have my jobs, two countries coming in. I'm going to tell you about them next week. Uh, lots of things happening, lots of opportunities, lots of, lots of people. Life is amazing. It's a game. It's a continuous game of happiness and stories and, uh, and opportunities and challenges. You decide how you want to live it. So I wake up every morning, 6 a.m. and say, okay, now today, how am I being constructive? What am I going to do today? Uh, how much can I drive? How much can I film? How many people I'm going to meet? You know, every single day I wake up. It's not about how much I can film or how much I can support people, which is very important, is how much I can learn from people. And I meet like approximately probably 15 persons a day, and at the end of the day is, what did I learn today? That's beautiful. Learning, learning, giving, learning, giving. Beautiful. That's Even amazing. with all the situation happening in Lebanon, there is work for whoever wants to work. There are I, agree. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. Who wants to see opportunities. I agree. You have to want it, you have to want it to begin with then for, for it to actually happen. Um, okay, so moving forward to social district. So now we're here, this is the district radio. This is district radio. You are the first person we host on district radio, which is amazing. Hey. You know, we need no food. Few, you know, no, the food's upstairs. Ah, okay. The food's upstairs. Okay. My friend, let me tell you something. Uh, have, have you walked around? Yeah. yeah okay. Beautiful. So, so from the first, the first thing you had, because for me, um, social district is a, it's a new concept. It doesn't exist anywhere. Um, when you walked in, what do you think? Your, your entire, what would you feel with, with this entire walk through social district? If I'm, an artist, this if I'm an artist, I felt satisfied. If I'm a foodie, I felt satisfied. If I'm a drinker, I felt satisfied. If I'm a music lover, I felt satisfied. If I like colors, I felt satisfied. It's a mini menu, a concept of many things where you would come in and feel good. Right. And and that's the first impression. Then I took the stairs, walked around, nice nice uh, colors. Uh, as a photographer, there are no flickering in my camera. Because I love the photographer colors. as well, to, to begin with. Yeah. Uh, open kitchens, nice smell, not un unpleasant uh, smell of food. Uh, lots of ideas. International cuisine. A trip across the globe without traveling and buying a ticket. Well done. But doesn't it amaze you though, by having so many different uh, kitchens right next to each other, you don't have that that smell of you know it, it, what do you call it? You know it doesn't. Maybe food to be bad. You know, we had head or we had Asian cuisine or burgers or Let pizza. Let me tell you the smell of what? The, the smell of eggs and in the breakfast of an hotel. When everyone every time at hotels there is that smell of eggs. Like, why would I smell that? Food? What food? Take, what food smells? that makes you feel the happiest. There must be a food, one food that you smell that makes you feel good inside. Emotional what? things, emotional, emotional. When you close your eyes and, and smell sa'atar, smell sobak, uh, the it, smell Because it reminds you of home though. Of so you course. connect the emotion to something that makes you okay. The smell, these are the, the smells that do not transform with, with cooking. I would tell you I would love to smell uh, a barbecue or, uh, or a burger, no, no. but it, it transforms. It transforms depending on the fat, it transforms depending on the meat, it transforms depending on the quality. When you say zata, it's just yeah. mint. Yeah, it's raw. Like ocean going yeah. out of the oven. Ooh, now we're hungry. Okay. Uh, look, what I do for a living is eat. Uh -huh. This is what I do for I don't use it. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you see? No, so. Hey, but this, this sums it up. And for me, uh, I was so happy that uh, I was told that uh, you're passing by. And I think it was for the first time in a very long time I was able to have a sit down with you. Uh, last time it was a three, four, four years ago. I don't even know, man. With this COVID situation for the past two years, I don't even, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be counting these two years or just, uh, hey, okay. who? Uh, I have dreams and I have a question. Tell me. Are you ready? I'm okay. One of my dreams is, with all the food I've done, Okay. 110 terabytes of data, right. 10 years, thousands of villages. Okay. How would I put everything I've filmed into music? So if I ask you, what would, how would you imagine the music of a Manusha? Or the music of a burger? Or the music of anything? So imagine closing your eyes, imagining me on television, watching my YouTubes, and while watching, you, in your head you would say, how would you imagine even his food. Wow. You know, I'll tell you. First of all, I'll tell you how I would. I would if, if I already take Lebanese food as in food, I would imagine it with the uh, with no sound and then just the the oud. I would the strings of the oud, just the strings, just the simple strings of the oud. So for me, 
Zata, the more simple the dish is, the more it simple sounds it would be. So the more we're looking at stuff from the village or stuff which is homegrown, it would be traditional sounds. And the more intense, and, and the more intense it would be, like let's say you're doing the the meshewi and the tawu, and, and, and you're doing that, it would it would have more of an orchestra backing it up. So that's how I would uh, sound. Which is crazy. It's a crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> so you know? the challenge would be. Um, spending the day at the social district, yeah. what would be the music of that mix and match of, of food? And while while walking around, would you feel light, beat, bass, treble, or what kind of instruments? And what would make people eat more and feel the vibes or the or the food traveling through their uh, veins? You, you see, with music, and uh, I, I think you might know this, but with music. Uh, it controls you. I'll tell you in what sense. In uh, in I don't know if you know this in malls, uh, in the U.S. for example, in grocery stores, the music that you hear in grocery stores are always fast-paced music. Fast-paced music, so you could move faster. You would never ever hear a, uh, in, a, in a proper grocery store music that's very slow and simple and hey, that because they don't want to be slow. You buy less and you become tired. When they put it, in, when 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 the when the sounds are more upbeat, you move faster and you more aggressively think less, and they want you to think less. So and that's how you do impulse buying. So you don't think about buying something. You're like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. So that's 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 crazy. So for me, uh, again, with your question, you were saying, you were saying, oh, what was the question exactly? I don't know why I, I, I tripped to that. So I, so I answered probably yeah. that what would be the sound of a manush or the music of a manush. Because Magushe is emotional, Magushe is the morning, Magushe is happiness. Magushe has lots of meaning, much more than being a Lebanese pizza. So if you want to close your eyes and probably on your next beat, uh, create a music called Magushe. How would you imagine? We can keep that for the next time we're going to meet, because that's what you're going to meet. And, 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 I'll show, and I'll, I'll make you listen to it. But again, because Magushe is so simple, and again, I will start with Oud, because Oud is the only instrument that reminds me of simplicity, apart from people um, who they they uh, tarab, I don't know when they sing from the village, uh, that and the oud. So for me, a simple oud for me just one stroke, it gives you goosebumps and it reminds you of home, and and so does my ocean. It's the most two simplest forms, music and food. Beautiful. So uh, if you want to move on to the next thing, I wanted to tell you, remind you of something uh, which was uh, Suhul Akhil back then, President. Yes. Remember? So the Suhul Akhil concept was uh, probably the first time where you go to a place or to an event, focusing on food, and then entertainment comes after. And this is where we can see today, people are more focusing on food, people are more focusing on, I want to come eat something yeah, nice. When was so like, when did you create that? When was that created? 2015. That's crazy, because for me, I remember 2015, it, it was, for the first time you would come and say, okay, we're going to Seoul Akhil, which is just, like, it's vendors, or in, in, it's restaurants put in a, in a, on a, the garden, or, or a parking lot, and whatever, and it was just, it was an entertainment. So you would so food was the entertainment. Food was the entertainment, which is crazy. Fast forward to today, yeah. this is what what was exactly. is now mainstream. Exactly. So and what food we, is entertainment. That's what we say to people who are hearing us today is social district is where you come in for probably ten different choices of cuisines. Every shop or every stop has different cuisines, so you won't have time two burgers or two sushi yeah. or etc. So travel along and eat and choose and, and do whatever you want. Uh, and then comes nice music and then comes nice colors and then comes probably someone uh, playing uh, on an instrument. Uh, but food in 2022 has become the main stage. You think it's because COVID happened and people kept started becoming uh, cooks and uh, spent so much time in the kitchen? I believe so. Because I, I, I was one I was, I was, uh, I don't know what you call it, experimental cooking, mm -hmm. like trying different flavors that you haven't even thought you had a time to before. It was just like, okay, and mm -hmm. let's try this, let me try this, let me try that. So it's crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here, man. And uh, obviously, we're going to go out for drinks later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you're staying here, you're spending the night here. Yeah. Not spending the night here, but you're spending, you're spending a, good, yeah. a good few hours. Yeah, actually, my time in. Right. So, what's your first take for food? Where are you going? 
That would be Kukli. Yeah. I've memorized. <laughs> I have. I have a list. They gave me a list of all these restaurants and. And I found a small uh, uh, burger. Um, small sliders. Sliders. Yeah. Uh, Ichiban is a very close friend, and, and I followed uh, the beginnings of Ichiban in Lebanon, so I would love to see how... You might be a mobile. How the sushi has come. It's crazy. And, uh, and, and the bars. And the bars. Favorite drink? Um, I'm lately, for the last year, I'm focusing on tequila. I'm a lot of uh, I mean, nice, oh, good nice tequila spender. I'm, I'm not a fan of, of mixes. So okay. I would go tequila on ice, not a shot. Tequila on ice with lemon juice. Alright. I'll empty a bottle and, and, and keep on smiling and stay forward. Amazing, bro. No driving! No driving. So must not. <laughs> wow, man. I would never think of you as a tequila drinker, but I, I, th I think of you as a short glass full of ice uh, whiskey on the rocks. Single malt, probably, at home. Um, the tequila puts me in a nice mood. And Ara puts me in a nice mood. I don't even know. I love Ara. Ara the smell of Ara puts me in a beautiful mood. I love Ara if, if it's a good Ara. And I can tell you a few brands that are really good. You can watch my documentary about Ara uh, on YouTube where we went into the little details. If you want to do Ara at home, what to add to it, why add to it, uh, any seed, where from. You can add an apple, you can add a little bit of sugar, and so on of the, these little details. And then Ara, if well done, is a beautiful drink. Unfortunately, and now the world is changing. When you say Arak, you say old people. But no, 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 Arak not necessarily. Is I think so okay. sexy. Even in Beirut, in Maram Khail, you have bars that serve Arak and you, ha you have them in long glasses. And that was one of my. Arak and orange, Arak and uh, uh, mulberry, uh, mulberry syrup. Arak. Yeah. Bring me back home, man. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I think it was good. I think we covered a few Thank you so much. Reports, right? Thank you. Anjad, uh, I'm happy to see you. Right? It's funny I see you in Dubai, I don't see you in Beirut. Do you have a challenge? Our next uh, talk is going to be about the music of Melos. Done deal, bro. Yeah. Done deal. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, bro. Great. <laughs> <laughs>